Penn State defeats Rutgers 27 to 6. Welcome into an instant recap here on Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, joined by associate producer Zane Bransfield and editor for Penn State Rivals, Happy Valley Insider.com, Dylan Callaghan Crowley. Gentlemen, Penn State gets back in the right column, the W column. Some interesting twists and turns here. It was what I anticipated, a slow start in the first half because you go from uh, a more or less a veteran play caller, right? Mike Yersich definitely has the experience. Maybe he's not the best at it, that's fine, but he has the experience. And then you go from not one, but two inexperienced play callers taking over in this case. We're not exactly sure how they split duties, but I, they did a good enough job. But we saw the second half be a little more successful when Drew Aller came out of the game. Drew Aller ended up getting banged up. We're, we're not sure what it was. It was definitely after that hit. He took a hit to the throwing shoulder. His right shoulder went into the blue tent. Uh, seemed from the TV broadcast that people were witnessing. Uh, it seemed to be emotional from it as he was taken out of the game. But then Bo, Bo Prabula just handled business. He didn't throw the football very much. Um, but One time. Yep, one, one pass attempt, but he did it with his legs. I, I think this is a good building block because as Coach James Franklin said, that this was, uh, he feels that this the, the program's in the best position possible. Everybody's aligned in more ways than one, but I think that everyone believes in what they're still doing within the program, even if the outside spectator spectator doesn't believe so as much. But the, really the story of this game was elite defense, stops Rutgers, uh, Rutgers defense posed some problems for the Penn State offense, but eventually they were able to close it out. Nicholas Singleton looked pretty good in the fourth quarter at the end of the game, so there's still something there. He's not, we, he's still, he has a lot of potential, and, and I think he'll get back to where he was. Zane, uh, you were patient last week, so I want to start with you. Your ultimate takeaway from the game, any, any concern with Drew Aller because there was success with the mobile quarterback? Because I know what kind of discussions everybody's going to want to have, but what did, what did you ultimately see from this game? Honestly, I'm not super worried about Drew Aller, whether he comes, like, obviously you don't want a guy to be hurt, but yep. I think the Penn State offense will be okay without him. <laughs> he still time. scored with Bo. Bo looked nice. Yep. Now, he didn't throw the ball, but he mentioned in his press conference just a little bit ago that there was some plays that were for him to throw the ball, and he decided not to throw the ball, or he made a check down, and he had to run it. Now, with that being said, it means Penn State can look forward to him, like, throwing next week if need be, if Drew Aller's still out, and yep. obviously he can run the ball. He led the team in rushing. And so it was like right up there with averaging. And so Penn State could definitely see a lot of improvement with Bo Pabula in the game as quarterback. As we've seen in previous years, Franklin loves to have a running quarterback. He succeeded very well with Trace McSorley being here. Now Clifford was a little bit of a different story, but Trace McSorley had a lot of success. And Bo Pabula has that similar type of build and similar type of quarterback as he is. So I think the Penn State offense will be okay with them. And he adjusted really well to the new play calling. So you're already fanning the flames a little bit that James Franklin and Penn State are typically more successful with dual threat quarterbacks, whether that's Sean Clifford. You, you still got a lot out of Sean Clifford for what it is worth. Uh, Trace McSorley and, and now Penn State at least seem a little more energized when Bo Rebula came into the game. But you can't ignore the fact that having a third running option, or in this case, whether it's Katron Allen, Nicholas Singleton, and then Bo Rebula, you have to account for that as well. Uh, Dylan, there, I think there's, I think Penn State, like I said, has something to at least move forward from. This wasn't a hangover type of game. Rutgers wasn't in it. I thought the matchup played very well into Penn State's hands. Uh, Chop Robinson took over the game, it felt like. Denied Dennis Sutton made big plays. KJ Winston, first career interception. So the defense, business as usual, but the story is going to continue to be the offense with the coordinator search whatever's going on with Drew Aller, if it's a shoulder or something, hopefully not a concussion. I, I don't think that's the case, but they pulled him from the game very quickly after he went into the injury blue tent. Now, what what else did you see from this game, Dylan? Yeah, I do apologize for not looking at the camera. It's been a lot going around the, <laughs> around right now behind yeah. us. I mean, yeah. as we started. got to uh, create the scene here in Beaver Stadium. As we started, Theo Johnson was uh, mm -hmm. okay, looking like taking a few minutes, uh, taking it all in maybe yeah. one last time. Uh, he's been here for a long time. been here for a long time. Uh, has eligibility to come back, but I think, we Technically, all, yes. I think we all agree that the NFL is his most likely destination in mm -hmm. a couple months. He's played enough college football. Um, yeah, I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to raise his stock with one more season. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's at least notable, I think, but, uh, yeah, today's game, I think it's what you expected for the most part. This is a Rutgers team that's beat up. Uh, they're coming off and demoralizing 22 to nothing loss in uh, 
Iowa City last week. Yeah, the, this was a Rutgers team that's very, you know, they've come a long ways under, under Shiano. Absolutely. Um, this is a team that was getting blown out regularly uh, just a couple years ago. Now they're a team that's competed against some of the best teams in the Big Ten for not just a quarter, but halves, three quarters. I mean, you look at what they've done throughout this season. They've kept it close with Michigan. They've kept it close with Penn State. They've kept it close with Ohio State. Anybody they face this season, they've pretty much kept it close within the first half, but yep. they, they just don't have the talent yet to go for the ability to close. Yeah, four quarters with these teams. That's what we saw today. They, they they ran out of gas against Penn State as the, as the game went on. They made too many mistakes. Penn State capitalized off three Rutgers turnovers. That's pretty big in this game, I think. Uh, Seventeen points out of those three turnovers. You know the offense. You look at it. Uh, it did. It started out kind of like the same old, same old offense. Uh, it, it was pretty clunky. It was not. It wasn't appealing to watch. Yeah. But once Bo got into the game, you saw it open up a little bit more. Now we don't know what the passing game was like because <laughs> Bo threw one pass. Uh, it was a completion for nine yards, but that's it. He threw one pass. We don't know what we still don't know what Bo looks like throwing the ball at any consistent rate. Which, yeah. uh, you know, going into next week, uh, James Franklin says he doesn't expect the Drew Aller injury to be long term. But, yeah. um, you know, we'll see what long term means to James Franklin. Does that mean yeah, bowl right. game count or does that mean he's gonna be ready to go for Michigan State and it's worth knowing that's not a seven not seven days till Michigan State. Right. It's, it's six days to Michigan State. You take with, away with travel. Yeah. You take away today, uh, five days to recover. Yep. Uh, four days with tr- to travel. I mean uh, it, the, the, it's a short week and that's something that's gonna probably be noted quite a bit this week. But uh, yeah, once the offense got like both feel involved it opened up a little bit more. But uh that's that's you know, it, it, that's great and all, but Bo isn't the starting quarterback. Uh, okay. To me, you know, the starting quarterback, the offense matters on the starting quarterbacks on the field. And yep. when Drew was on the field, that offense really didn't really open up your eyes all that much. Uh, the passing game was pretty poor again. Um, they finished for under 100 yards again in this game. I mean, Rutgers has a top five pass they do. defense, they if do. you can believe that. They do, and they showed it again. Yeah, and, uh, you know, nobody, I don't think, expected a major change from last week. Um, but I, I, I think this is also signs that it's not, A, all Mike Yersich's fault uh, for the offense yep. this year. B, it's part of personnel issues. The wide receiver room is not good. I, I, can't, I can't think if... Dante Cephas or Keandre Lambert Smith had a catch. I, I yeah, really, I, the, I think they were held receptionless. The entire wide receiver room needs to be pretty much revamped. There's an eva- major evaluation. Yeah, major evaluation. And uh, it, I think there'll be a lot of turnover in that position this year, this offseason. Yeah, uh, potentially. And you can do that with with the with, transfer with portal. The transfer, and real quick, Zane. So, Bo Perbula might start in, in six days against Michigan yep. State. In Ford Field, that's where the Detroit Lions play. That's that Black Friday game, 7:30 on NBC. How would you feel? with Bo Perbula if he actually is confirmed as the starter and plays a full four quarters if Drew Aller is not able to go? I would have full confidence. I think Bo okay. Perbula has like proven himself plenty of times. Like, sure, he hasn't thrown the ball that many times, but it doesn't mean he can't. We've seen him in practice. Mm-hmm. He makes good throws. He makes decent reads. He can run the ball. And like Franklin said, it gives the defense to make a totally different look when you have a dual-threat yep. quarterback that Absolutely. out there on the field. So. No matter what Michigan State plans to do, whether they think it's going to be Aller or think it's going to be Prabula on the field, I think whatever happens is going to happen. Penn State's going to play it safe. They don't want Aller to get hurt worse, so I think there's a very good chance that Bo does start. And I have a lot of confidence in him. I I like dual-threat quarterbacks. Franklin has success with them. The offense looked much better today once he went in the game. I think Bo has a lot more confidence than Drew does, and I think it shows. And Bo was saying, he's like, I prepare for it. I prepare like the starter every week, no matter what the situation is. It's like, I was the fourth string in high school. I prepared like that then. He's like, Absolutely. I'm going to continue to do it. And I think I think he's earned that respect. I think people should start looking at Bo Perbola because I think he can be that guy from Penn State. And I don't, I don't think people should overlook him. Dylan, what do you what do you need to see from Penn State against Michigan State? Because I, I think we'll see yeah. not necessarily radical changes going into the bowl game, but you will be able to they can only when you fire your offensive coordinator in the middle of the season, there's only so much you can do with two first time yeah. play caller callers. The system is what it is. So they're not gonna make changes. But then when they have a month to do it, you're going from five day turnaround because the coordinator's fired on we think what Saturday night, Sunday at the very latest, and then you gotta go into a game six days later and then you go on a short week on the road to a neutral site against Michigan State so there's not going to be 
all these dramatic changes. But when the bowl game comes around, that's when we could see maybe, hey, Drew Aller, throw, just, you know, just throw it deep, right? Some, some different wrinkles into the offense that they have more time to prepare for and they can isolate this opponent. Dylan, what do you want to see against Michigan State that will make you feel a little more confident about the Nittany Lions just moving forward into the offseason? Yeah. they got to finish on a better note than this. It's hard because, and, and it kind of finishes off my last point too, is that I, I think at the end of the day, you look at the last few offense coordinators from Penn State outside of Joe Moorhead, you look at the entire history of Penn State offense coordinators under James Franklin, only one of them has really caught their own offense. That's Joe Moorhead. Every yeah. other offense, James Franklin has had at least a hand in, and the results have never really been, you know, all that, sure. all that great. No. You can argue Penn State's put up 30 points, almost 40 points a game this year because of the town and the town alone, not because of the, the offense, but the, the defense and the defense, and not because of the the game plan and, or the scheme or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, this Penn State offense is. It, do, it doesn't appeal to anybody. I mean, it, it's not appealing to recruits. Uh, you have a five-star quarter, uh, high four-star, five-star quarterback, depending on which, you know, um, sure. uh, yeah. service you look at. I know at Rivals we had him as a four-star quarterback, and a lot of people claim him to be a five-star. But either way, you have a guy who everybody thought could be a game-changer for this program. And he, let, let's be honest, Drew hasn't had that impact this year. He's, it, he's, it's a it's a mental uh, thing with he, him. It's, yeah. not, it's not from an athletic standpoint or a sure. talent standpoint. Sure, sure. And, but you could also argue, you know, the, the – Play call for him this year. It wasn't great. No, it didn't help. Ben, ben it didn't State help. failed to showcase his skill set this year. Yeah, um, bad. And, and that's that's on Drew, but that's also on the wide receiver room. Mm -hmm. And the every it's everybody. Everybody. That's a lot of people. Yeah, everybody. It wasn't appealing, but it, uh, this season. And so I'm not sure there's really much that it can show next week in Michigan State. I think at the end of the day, you're just, you. I, I'm, I've been saying it for weeks. I still say you need to find some wide receivers who that you can have at least some belief in going into the off season because right mm -hmm. now. I mean, Keandre Lambert Smith could be gone. I think Dante Seeps returns, but th there's you just... could hypothetically have all three of the starters back: Trey Wallace, KLS, and sure. Dante Seeps. Hypothetically, hypothetically. But I mean, coming to the season, the big question mark with the wide receivers was there's not much return in production. And so, do you want all three back? Right? You can have them sure. back. Do you want them? But you know, now eleven weeks in the season, there's still not much return in production heading into the next mm -hmm. season, and that's. Uh, that has to be alarming for James Franklin, Argus Higgins, and I mean, you're going to try to sell an offensive coordinator to come here, whether it's a current Power 5 head coach a la Joe Moorhead, mm -hmm. or an offense coordinator who's up and coming looking to get a head coaching job. You're going to try to sell them on coming to Penn State, revamping this offense again, a head coaching job within probably two or three years. And That's you're probably going to have, yes, the accelerated time. Exactly. That, especially, you know, it, it's it's coming down to make or break moments for James Frank in the next few years, in my opinion. Well, he's got that Jimbo Fisher buyout that Penn State yeah, that, which doesn't helps. exactly have the resources readily available there was to no do Texas that. Texas oil money. There's, no, no. There's, no there's natural money. gas money, as some people have put it, but, <laughs> but not enough. <laughs> but I mean, I you got to find a way to showcase some of this talent because what are how are you going to appeal to offensive coordinators to come in and mm -hmm. take over this job? Yes, there's talent, but that talent hasn't proven to be able to be overly effective. The running backs stay look good. The running backs are going to be good next year. There's no doubt about that. But you've got to find somebody in that wide receiver room to step up, I think, next yeah. week. Because, I mean, you can you can revamp a wide receiver room in the transfer portal, but you cannot revamp an entire wide receiver room in the transfer. You can't, you can't send everybody out and bring in, you know, 12 new scholarship wide receivers. You're going to be able to bring in maybe – two wide receivers, three yep. max, depending on how many depart. But like that's only going to make such yep. so much of an impact. They ultimately have to recruit that res that wide receiver position better because as we've mm -hmm. been as we've seen with Colorado, with Michigan State, with a few other programs, sure. you can go in the transfer portal, get some good guys. You can maybe have a great year where everything goes right, but it's in mm -hmm. a, it's not an effective way to win year in and year out no matter the position. Because it's it's a mixed bag of results. You're gonna get hit sometimes, and sometimes you're gonna it's gonna backfire. And uh, for now, Penn State it's it hasn't panned out. That's for sure. I mean, Dante Sivas and Malik McLean. Yeah, it, oh for oh for two at this point in time. Disappointing Pending. seasons. Disappointing seasons for both of those guys. And uh, well, I there's not much I think you could else you yep. could say really about the offense going into next week. You just gotta hope somebody breaks out. They they have to hope somebody breaks out and gives you a little bit of hope going into uh, the postseason and yep. going into the offseason, and you build from there. How about a positive subject to finish on? And Zane, I will give you the last word with this question. Senior day, right? 
seniors. Penn State had a lot of people walk and get recognized today. There's a lot of quality veterans on this team from a person standpoint, who they are as people. They're, they're very genuine, down to earth, very respectable. And James Franklin, like he's emphasized that he wants to help these people become young men and have life after football. I, from a talent perspective, though, for what they do on the football field, Zane, is it Theo Johnson? Is it Olu Fashionu? Is it Keaton Ellis? Is it Adisa Isaac? Who who do you look at and say, like, man, that's going to be tough to replace next season? Who's going to be that biggest loss? Because they're, they're, they have to move 100 nors at any of them. I think it's a couple. I think I think it's Adisa Isaac for okay. what he does on the field. But I think Theo Johnson provides more mm. overall because he can catch the ball, he plays tight end, he starts a tight end, he's a decent blocker. But the biggest thing is his leadership. Franklin mentioned in his press conference that he was – in the locker room right after the game, mm -hmm. giving a speech to the guys. Now, we don't want, know what Johnson said, but like yeah. Franklin mentioned that it was very impactful. It meant a lot to him, meant a lot to the other guys. So I think like we've heard a lot of stories like that throughout the season. So I think Theo Johnson provides that aspect of the game. And I think he's that guy like would bring people along, get them hyped up if they need to, if the yep. game's down, and pick somebody up when they fall in. And I think he's going to be that most important guy that Penn State loses, and it's Part of on the field because he does produce yep. but also what he does in the locker room because that's overlooked a lot of times and that can make or break a whole team and especially a culture like penn state gentlemen this has been well a, a season that had some disappointments in it but penn state is looking like they're going to finish 10 and 2 they're going to go to a new year six bowl game but like i appreciate being able to have the opportunity to cover penn state football penn state sports in general and bring them to you the everydayers here on locked on nittany lions i appreciate both of you greatly coming on the shows throughout the off season zane helping me be a part of the team this season to bring all the content that we can zane's a big help with that dylan with all the analysis that he gives and gives us news as well to dis discuss on the show so if you want more of that news you go to happyvalleyinsider.com penn state rivals subscribe if you don't but still a handful great handfuls of information over there in general and of course what zane does you can follow zane on x twitter you can follow myself zach sake on x and twitter season's not over but this is our final final game here in beaver stadium it's been quite a journey this season i appreciate each and every one of you for more penn state football content more penn state sports content subscribe to the channel wherever you get your podcasts including youtube and keep it right here on locked on nittany lions